on the statistical testing. So this is on uniformly most powerful test. Again, so this is our last class. So we already mentioned two example in uniformly most powerful test. Again, the purpose of uniformly most powerful test is you to find the best critical region. So the best critical region of size alpha normally we mention to find uniformly most powerful critical region of size alpha. Okay. But certain case, uniformly most powerful tests do not always exist. Okay. However, when they do exist, that means we use the Neiman Pearson theorem, okay, which is could provide a technique for finding them. So Okay, in this case, we will have a simple hypothesis. Okay, simple hypothesis and also alternative composite hypothesis. You will have your H0 and also H1. Okay, so H0 and also H1. So sometimes it can be both composite hypothesis or sometimes it can be either simple hypothesis for H0 and again your alternative, it can be composite hypothesis. So when I mention about simple hypothesis, so that's mean you will have H0 theta equals to some value. Okay. For composite hypothesis, so that's mean theta less than or equal, theta greater than or equal, or you can have theta less than, theta greater than, or theta unequal. Okay. If you refer to the first example that we already discussed on previous class, Okay, this one you have a normal distribution. Okay, a normal distribution with mean zero. You have variance sigma square is equals to theta. So that's mean in this case theta is unknown parameter. So you want to show that there exists a uniformly most powerful test with significant level alpha for testing the simple hypothesis. So you have theta equals to theta prime versus your alternative is theta greater than theta prime. Okay. So in this case, okay, if you refer back, you have your normal mean zero variance theta. So first we set up the likelihood function. So it becomes one over two pi theta to the power n over 2, exponential negative summation xi square over 2 theta. Okay. So let's say we want to test here is h not theta equals to theta prime. Alternative is theta greater than theta prime. Okay, so let's say let theta double prime represent a number greater than theta prime and let k denote a positive number. Okay, so we said that theta double prime must be represent a number greater than theta prime. So then we took a Neiman Pearson theorem. So that's mean you have L theta prime divided by L theta double prime. So you construct the likelihood function. So you replace with theta prime and also theta double prime. Okay. Next step, you simplify here. So you have theta double prime over theta prime over n over 2. Okay. So exponential negative summation x i square plus summation x i square over two theta double prime. Again, the step you simplify it again. Okay, and then you take let's say we have k is a positive number. So let your Neiman Pearson theorem less than or equals to some of value of k. Okay, so to simplify you take ln. So we will have n over 2 ln theta double prime over theta prime minus theta double prime minus theta prime over 2 theta prime theta double prime summation x i square less than or equals to ln k. Okay. So you just modify, you manipulate the equation. So we will have this one, n over 2 ln theta double prime over theta prime minus ln k less than or equals to theta double prime minus theta prime over 2 theta prime, theta double prime, summation x i square. Okay. So again, simplify and then you replace this equation equals to C. Okay. Some value of constant C. So now you will have summation x i square greater or equals to C. Okay. 
Okay, so then you write the set C is summation xi square greater or equals to C is the best critical region of size alpha for testing this simple hypothesis. Okay, so one more thing that you have to note that you have your symbol here is summation xi square. Okay, so once we have summation xi square, so that means it becomes a chi square distribution. Okay, if your H0 is true, then the random variable summation xi square. Okay, so normally because we have, um, let's say we have x minus mu over sigma. So, but if you have uh, summation xi minus mu over sigma square, then it will come chi square with n degree of freedom. Okay, so but if you have just x square, so that's mean chi square distribution. But since you have summation, so that's why we will have chi square with n degree of freedom. Okay, so in this case, your mu is equals to zero. Your sigma here is sigma square is equals to theta. So that's why we have summation x i square. When your h naught is true, your theta is equals to theta prime. So in here, I replace theta prime. So it's just written as chi square with n degree of freedom. So when you want to write the rejection, we not rejection region. So probability of summation as i square greater equals to c. Given your h naught, that's me reject h naught when your h naught is true. So this one is your alpha. So if you want to test, let's say if you have alpha 0 0.05, so you can compute using your stats table. Okay. So for each number theta double prime greater than theta prime, the argument holds in which this set, okay, this set of your critical region is a uniformly most powerful test of size alpha. 